Hello? Sony? Sony, Sony, is that you? Free. Little happy ghosty? God, why? Quest 64. This is kind of an odd one. You see, online I find that people hate Quest 64, with some even going as far to claim that it's the worst game on the N64. However, when I've talked to people face to face about the game, I've heard mostly positive things. It's kind of an odd experience. So, yeah. I'll be honest with you, I had originally planned to do a versus of this game in Aiden Chronicles. Aiden Chronicles? this game, but I found that game to be a lot more time consuming than I had anticipated, and I wanted to get this review out by today, so there's that. I also just have a lot to say about Quest 64, but I promise you one day I will review Aiden Chronicles, Aiden Chronicles, maybe even compared to Quest 64, but that's only if it doesn't make me go blind first. Alright, let's get focused. Quest 64, developed by Imagineer and released on June 1st, 1998, Quest 64 existed for one reason, to give the N64 a damn RPG. The problem was though, it wasn't exactly what people wanted. Quest 64's story is… not great. You play as the apprentice magician, Brian. Yeah, your lead character's name is Brian, and you have no option to change the name, so we're stuck with it. Brian is setting out to find his father, who has set out to find a thief who stole the Eltel book. Eltel book? Oh god, RPG names. If this book is not found, then bad things will happen. No! Not bad things like burnt toast and wet socks. On Brian's journey, he goes to many different cities, and by many, I mean four. Each of these cities has lost a special amulet relating to one of the four different elements. Brian is tasked with getting back these amulets to restore balance to their cities, but, and this is stupid, once you have the amulets, the people just let you keep them. Apparently, it's okay for them not to have the amulet so long as it's in the hands of an apprentice magician named Brian. This is so stupid. After Brian collects all the amulets, he goes to Brownock Castle, where he reunites with a person named Bart, not sure what the purpose for this is, and he finds out that Shannon, a character that you'll find at the different ends in the game has been evil this whole time, and she directs you to Mammon to release him from his prison by use of the amulets and the Eltel book. Eltel book. Eltel book? Eltel book. Eltel book. But instead of doing this, Brian kills the beast, and then Shannon is like, I guess humans don't suck. And it ends. And I have just one tiny question. What about Brian's dad? Honestly, what the hell? There's no mention of Brian's dad towards the end, so when it just kind of ended without showing us their reunion or anything, I felt a little jaded. Oh wait, that's your dad? Bart? Bart is your dad? No. No, <laughs> his name is Bart. I don't care. They didn't make any effort at all to make this work. I honestly thought that this was some kind of random character because there was no sense of a father-son relationship right here. I just thought they knew each other from high school or something. At least give him the crazy strand of hair to give some resemblance. God, this story is awful. And what's worse is the storytelling. Now, I'm not a fan of cutscenes in particular, but if you're gonna have a story like this, maybe it would do the game some good to have a little bit of cutscenes. Even if they were simple, cutscenes could still help the story flow. This game looks good enough, so I think cutscenes would really help. And would you look at that, I found something positive to talk about. It won't last long won't last long at all. I think that Quest 64 looks pretty damn good. I don't mind Brian's design, but a lot of the other characters look absolutely ridiculous. However, the scenery looks very nice. It's very clean, but there's also not a lot to look at. One part of the visuals that I definitely want to give the game props to are the enemies. The enemies, for the most part, are all distinct from one another, and while some look just flat out stupid, others look awesome. It starts off with the rather plain enemies, and as the game progresses, we get to see some really cool ones. I especially love the enemies in World of Mammon because they really convey RPG adventure. You got unicorns, statues, and fish sticks. My point is, I like Quest 64's visuals even if there isn't much to look at, but I think that the intriguing enemy designs later on in the game make up for it. It's the good part of the presentation. And now for the bad part. The music. It's not horrible. But it's not good. Quest 64 sounds like music from the Super Nintendo. This serves as both a negative and positive point. The feel of the game definitely feels like a classic RPG, probably due in part to the music, but the music quality is not up to par with N64 capabilities. If you were to pull the music and listen to it outside of the game, it'd be hard to tell what system it's from. One problem with the music is that it just kind of gets repetitive. And by kind of, I mean definitely, absolutely, 100%, it's repetitive. 
It's definitely repetitive. There's a track that plays at the different towns and it just comes off as unoriginal. They just change the instruments ever so slightly and that doesn't scream, we put effort into the game. A really positive thing about the music is that it fits. Almost every track has the right feel to it. It has that perfect adventure RPG-like feel and that's what it needed to do. With that said, there isn't a whole hell of a lot of variety, but it doesn't really need to have too much variety. A lot of the game is kind of the same. When the music needed to change up styles, it would do so accordingly, but there wasn't a lot of that. The variety is very uniform and well, I think that's okay. I'd rather the game's music fit than not. Near the end, music just stops, giving you the sense that you're closing in on the climax of your journey, and it's fantastic. Sometimes the most powerful way to convey feeling with music is to not have it at all. But this isn't the end of the game, so that feeling is lost quickly. That's just something that I wanted to note because it bothered me a lot more than it should have. So I complain a lot. How about this? I talk about something that I actually enjoy in this game. The controls. So the controls for Quest 64 are actually one of the reasons why I don't dislike this game. I actually rather like the game and you can almost blame the controls entirely for it. You move around with the control stick, A or Z is used to interact with people and things, make your move selection and even whack enemies with your staff, B is mainly used to position the camera behind you, R is used to bring up an items menu, and the C buttons are used to pick which spells you'll be using. The control stick and A button do exactly what they should do, and I actually rather enjoy having the Z button be a secondary option for selecting things, although I never used it. B being used to place the camera behind you is fantastic because this camera is one of the worst. It'll often give you shots where you can't see anything, so you'll hold on to B to place it behind you, but when you let go of B, the camera goes back to its crappy position. This is so frustrating when the gameplay in Quest 64 is the way that it is. I feel like R bringing up an items menu is kind of pointless when pausing the game would do just as well. It's only a little bit more convenient to use the R button. What about the C buttons? I like C buttons. I like C buttons a lot. I think that you could very well trace my love for games like Pokemon Stadium and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater to great C button mapping. There's just something about these yellow buttons that gets me going. Having the four elements coincide with the four C buttons is absolutely genius. Up C is fire, right C is wind, down C is water, and left C is earth. This, I love this. Now, I'm not saying that I love this game, but the way that it utilizes the C buttons is absolutely perfect. This game feels like it was truly made for the N64, and its control setup definitely reflects this. I feel like everything wrong with Quest 64 is in the gameplay. Quest 64's gameplay is where there seems to be a lot of issues. Now, I don't plan to complain too much about it, or at least I hope I don't, because there has already been a lot said about this game. I don't think that this game is as bad as some people say it is. It actually came as a surprise to me how not bad this game is. I'm not saying that it's good, but it's a lot better than a few people have made it out to be. That's not to say that it doesn't have its problems though. But first, let's talk about some of the things that I think are actually pretty good. The battle system. So I've mentioned plenty of times how I think that Paper Mario's battle system is absolutely genius. Well, I wouldn't say that this system is genius, but it's definitely a lot more inventive than your typical turn-based battle system. It feels interactive, and I think that it doesn't get enough credit. Battles, with the exception of boss battles, are random encounters. These random encounters can be one or multiple enemies, and this is important. As soon as the battle starts, you're given two rings. The first and smaller ring is how far you can move in the battle. That's right, you get to move around rather than just stand in one spot. What is this sorcery? The second ring is how far the battle can go. If you use your moves wisely, then you can inch over to the outside of the second ring and escape the battle. This is an interesting system and is far more interesting than going over to run on an options menu. You're trying to escape and you'll have to dodge attacks if you want to make it out safely. Oh yeah, did I mention that you can dodge attacks? This is another aspect of the battle system that I love. When an opponent uses an attack, you can move, potentially getting out of the way and avoiding damage. It comes in handy a lot and becomes a big part of the strategy of the game. Position is key. And not only is it key in avoiding attacks, but also hitting them. For example, attacks like the first level earth and wind attacks are best done far away, and attacks like the first level fire and water are best done up close. Positioning yourself correctly is absolutely necessary. It makes missing attacks a lot more justifiable because you can really see yourself missing. Before anyone can jump on that though, you can miss even if you hit them square in the face. So there. This is a battle system that I've always wanted to mess around with, so maybe that's why I like it so much. There's probably another game out there with a similar battle structure that I don't know about, but the way that Quest 64 does it just works for me. I also like the leveling up system in this game. Once you gain a level or talk to one of these fairy things, then you get to level up one of your elements. As the elements level up, you'll gain more and more attacks. You can go through these attacks with the C buttons during battle. It's very intuitive, and after a while, I could pick certain attacks without even looking. Now, combining these two things together, the battle system and gaining more elemental moves is probably the thing that I love most about this game. Now, I'll admit, the first few power-ups that you get for each of the elements 
kind of suck. With Earth, you go from boulder to bigger boulder. Woo. With Wind, you go from wind cutter to bigger wind cutter. Woo. With Fire, you go from fireball to bigger fireball. Woo. With Water, you get it. However, once you're stuck with an element for a while, then you start to unlock cooler and better moves. And even though going from something like boulder to bigger boulder is boring, it still helps with strategy. And here's where having multiple enemies comes into play. Look at that, it's all coming back around. So you're facing multiple enemies and you keep using your boulder attack, and you can only get one enemy with a small boulder. Well, with a bigger boulder, you can increase your chance of hitting more enemies. It covers more ground. This may sound stupid to be excited about, but knocking out multiple enemies with one attack is really cool. And like I said, you get better moves. Eventually, as Earth, you get Avalanche, which lets you just drop boulders from the sky at random, and sometimes it does massive damage to multiple enemies. As Water, you get more of support spells. Some spells can heal you, while others will actually teleport you out of battle or even to the last town that you visited. I love this progression of leveling up elements. And leveling up elements isn't the only unique level up system in the game. How you level up your HP, MP, defense, and agility is also very interesting and interactive with the world. You don't just level up and then everything raises, it raises up by your actions. Your HP and defense are literally leveled up by how much you get hit. You're hardened, so to speak. The more times that you get smacked in the face, the higher your HP and defense will be. I'm stronger now. MP is raised by simply using your spells. The more times that you have a successful spell, whether it be damaging an opponent or giving yourself a buff, then you gain experience. And agility is raised by running around a lot and avoiding attacks. This is pretty self-explanatory. All of these are great ideas, so why doesn't anyone ever give this game some credit? I have to find that people just undercut all of this game's ideas. Well, the battle system and how it interacts with how you level up is, in my opinion, a wonderful idea. But unfortunately, a wonderful idea is only that. If an idea isn't allowed to flourish correctly, then you just have something on paper. An idea can't live without proper execution, and that is where Quest 64 fails on so many levels. I honestly don't have anything negative to say about the battle system itself. I think it's just fine with maybe the exception of a horrid camera. And even though I like the idea of leveling up your elements to gain bigger and better attacks to cover more ground, the criticism of how some newer attacks are lame is valid. But here's the biggest issue with the game overall. The different forms of grinding. I don't mind grinding. I feel like it's something that we, as gamers, have just been forced to get used to. Also, when you play an RPG where you don't have to grind at all, it often makes the game too easy. I'm talking to you. Get out of my house! So a little bit of grinding doesn't bother me. However, I think it's time that we come to accept that grinding in general is not a great thing, and Quest 64 did not get the memo. I had to grind for a couple of hours before the first boss. The first boss. To raise your elemental levels, you'll have to get into a lot of battles. A lot. To raise your HP and defense, you'll have to take a lot of smacks to the face. A lot. To raise your MP, you'll have to do a lot of spells. A lot. To raise your agility, you'll have to run around a lot. A lot. The prospect of leveling up your elements to see what new attacks you'll get sounds like a great plan until you quickly re realize that leveling up is a hassle in this game. And not just that, but going into this game thinking you level up each level evenly is absolutely stupid. But how are you supposed to know that? I ended up raising water and earth once I realized how tedious this game was getting, because I at least wanted to have some strength for the bosses. But it was kind of too late, because I had already wasted time and energy on fire and wind. Stupid, ignorant son of a- Why does this game have to be like this? I honestly feel like this game would have been a lot more adored if the grinding wasn't so time consuming. It does throw in these little spirit thingies that will level up one element for you if you find them, which is nice, but I feel like these were literally thrown in because the developers knew that grinding was crazy in this game. Like I said, grinding is okay, but when you spend about 75% of your game time doing it, then something is wrong with your game. This upset me so much because I really, really wanted Quest 64 to be good. I really did. <sighs> And I wish that the grinding was the only major problem, but it's not. Quest 64 is lacking so much. If I'm going to give Wipeout 64 crap for lacking things that a racing game should have, then I can't make an exception for Quest. To start with something simple, there is no currency in this game. You don't get to buy items, but rather you'll run into them randomly. Sometimes people will just give you items, but mostly you'll just find them in treasure chests. But for some reason, there are shops in this game. These shops will give you items to heal your HP and MP, but only if you don't have those items already. Why? I think that not having a means of exchange is so dumb, especially if you're not playing with the water element. The water element eventually gives you a spell to heal HP, and I imagine that playing without this would be a drag because you'd be running out of healing items really fast. You could always go back and get them, but the shop will only give you one. And speaking of items, items, I feel like a held item mechanic would be interesting, but that may be asking for too much. I also find the game to be a little bit too... simple. Great, now I'm breaking my own rules. You see, I think a simple game is just fine and can even be better than a complicated game. But if a game is lacking, then I take problems with it.
Quest 64 is lacking. You only play as Brian, which I think is kind of flawed. Now, Brian can learn any and all elements, therefore giving him the options to do almost every attack. So Brian can get the job done. But I think that if they gave you one or two other characters to play as, then you could really experiment with all the elements. Because like I said, you only have time to really focus on a couple. You would have to change up the battle system a little bit, but I think that it would have overall helped the game to play as multiple characters. This would have also helped the game from getting stale. And speaking of stale, the dungeons. By dungeons, I mean forests and caves, but whatever. The challenge of these dungeons is simply going from point A to B with lots and lots of enemies in between. Now, that doesn't sound horrible, but it doesn't make for interesting gameplay at all. There are no puzzles or anything to keep the player engaged. The hardest part of this is surviving, which you can say is a nice little challenge on its own, but if you have the water element power up, you know, healy healy, walkie walkie, then it's incredibly uninteresting. Not just that, but dungeons are also super easy to get lost in, as a lot of them just kind of look the same and there's no sense of direction. To kind of fight this, after you defeat enemies, Brian will jump and turn to face where you were running before. That's nice so you don't get lost, but I think that they should have tried more to signify location. Oh yeah, and some places have areas where you don't even fight enemies. You just walk. And walk. And walk. This is so difficult. Well damn, I guess I complained more than I wanted to. Don't get me wrong, I like the game, and I love some of its ideas. I just think that the overall execution was awful. Where the game isn't awful though is the bosses. However, the bosses in Quest 64 aren't really anything too special. The first boss is an earth user, the second a wind user, the third a water user, the fourth another wind user, and the fifth is a fire user. Whoa, whoa there Quest 64, two wind users? Are you sure you want to break formula like that? That's, that's, that, that's kind of, that's different. That's out of the box. These bosses I've already mentioned are easily the hardest bosses in the game, specifically the first three. I didn't know how much writing was necessary to fight the first boss, so I ended up having to constantly go back to fight him. They don't make a big deal about the wind boss, so when I came across him, I wasn't expecting it, and I got my ass handed to me. He kind of comes out of nowhere with little to no setup. And the water boss is the one that taught me that I need to focus on one or two elements rather than all of them, because when I got to her, my elements were way too weak. So I ended up spending about five hours grinding. After this though, the bosses became way too easy, because I was using earth and water, which have some of the best spells in the game. Fights usually went something along the lines of me hitting them with avalanche, healing, and stealing their magic power. And just like the music, it became repetitive. And just like the music, it became repetitive. The last three boss fights all take place in the final stretch of the game. First, you face Guilty, who has no real relevance. All that I did was put on Magic Barrier, which made me invincible to attacks for three turns, and then I dropped rocks on him. Same went Kang, but he just- But for some reason, he was a lot easier. And the final boss fight is against Mammon, who looks a lot like Dracula from Castlevania Legacy of Darkness. It's all just coming back around, but- easiest boss in the game. I put on Magic Barrier and braided him with Avalanche and he went down in less than three minutes. I don't even know why I play video games anymore. I, I just, I don't think that I'm allowed to like them. So I can give a pass to the other bosses because they felt like they were trying to fill up certain roles. The first few bosses allow you to challenge the four elements and Guilty and Kang, but you just give a build to Mammon. But just like other things in this game, Mammon seems to be lacking. I think the right way to do this boss would to have him have four forms. Yes, he needs forms. He could go through the different elements, calling back to the former bosses and extending the fight, giving this quest an epic finish. But nope. So I wouldn't say by any means that Quest 64 is good. However, I wouldn't say that it sucks or is horrible. I'd be willing to say that it's below average. It's not the worst game I've ever reviewed. I actually really like Quest 64 to be honest. There's some kind of charm to it that I haven't really felt in any other game. And it's a welcome addition to my collection, but it's not good. While I absolutely adore the control setup and the battle system, I can't ignore this game's glaring issues. And there it was, Quest 64. You tried, buddy. Let me know what game you really enjoy that everyone else thinks is trash. Let's get the flame war started. And to the people who have requested Paper Mario vs. Quest 64, Paper Mario wins. Why? Paper Mario is a good game. So there. There you go. Get out of my house. Thanks for watching this video, guys and gals alike. If you enjoyed yourself, then why not check out some previous reviews that I've done. Just recently, I reviewed Shadow Man for the N64, and I also did a review of Pilot Wing 64 that you can check out. I rather enjoy those reviews, so I recommend them. Once again, thanks for watching. Until next time.